All right, so now we're going to go over naming molecular compounds. And in this video, we're just going to name simple molecular compounds that are only composed of two elements. So there are other naming systems for organic molecules and large carbon chains and things like that, but we're not really going to get into that. We're just going to go into simple molecular compounds in which we only have two elements. So recall that for a molecular compound, we have two nonmetals. So in fact, if you're looking at a compound and you want to determine whether or not it's ionic or molecular, if you don't have any metals in there, generally that's, that means you have a molecular compound. So to name a molecular compound, you have the name of the first element followed by the base name of the second element plus the suffix IDE. And in front of the names of each element you have prefixes. And the prefixes are as follows. Mono is the prefix for 1, di is the prefix for 2, tri for 3, tetra for 4, penta for 5, hexa for 6, hepta for 7, octa for 8, nona for 9, and deca for 10. So those are the first 10 prefixes that we use when we talk about uh, molecular compounds. So you might be asking yourself, well, which one of the elements is the first element, and which one of the elements is the second element? In ionic compounds, it's easy because we always name the cation first. In other words, we, we name the metal first before we name the nonmetal. But with molecular compounds, we have two nonmetals. So which nonmetal takes precedence and becomes the first element that we name? So imagine that this is just a, a rough diagram of a periodic table. Now the first element that you want to name when you name molecular compounds is the one that is more metal-like. So the more metal-like element is the one that you're going to name first. And how do you determine which one is more metal-like? Well, in general, the element that is further down and to the left on the periodic table that is going to be the more metal-like and thus the first element that you name in the molecular compound. So if two elements are in the same column, you would pick the one that is the, the uh, bottom most element. If two, if two elements if were in the same row, then you would pick the leftmost element and so forth. So one more tip when we work with molecular compounds and that is that the prefix mono is usually omitted in the first element when we have one atom of that element. So in other words, like take carbon monoxide for instance. Carbon monoxide has one carbon atom and one oxygen atom but we don't call it monocarbon monoxide, we just call it carbon monoxide. So the first element, if there's only one atom of, of that element, then we drop the prefix mono and we just name the element. So let's go through a couple more examples. Si2Br6. What is the name of this compound? So we have silicon and we have bromine. And we have two silicons, so that's going to be di silicon. And then we have six bromines, so this is going to be di silicon hexa bromide. So when we're given a formula, we usually don't have to figure out which element's going to be first because in the formula, the, the, the more metal-like element is presented first as well. So in the formula uh, for disilicon hexabromide, silicon is the more metal-like element, so that's why it appears first in the chemical formula. P 
PCL5. What is the formula for PCL5? The formula, it looks like we have phosphorus and we have chlorine. So it's going to be phosphorus. And we wouldn't call it monophosphorus because for the first element we omit the prefix mono. And it looks like we have five chlorines, so this is going to be phosphorus penta chloride. Remember, for the second element, we have the base name and the suffix IDE. So let's do another one. Cl2O7. So we have chlorine and we have oxygen. And we have two chlorines, so that's going to be dichlorine. And then we have seven oxygens, so that's going to mean that, that means we use the prefix hepta for seven, so dichlorine hept oxide. And we usually drop the last vowel on the prefix when we have an element that begins with the vowel. So instead of hepta oxide, we just say heptoxide. It just kind of rolls off the tongue better. NF3. What is the form or what is the name of NF3? Well, we have nitrogen and we have fluorine. We have one nitrogen, so that means we just put nitrogen, not mononitrogen. And then we have three fluorine atoms, so that means we're going to use trifluoride. Nitrogen trifluoride. And let's do one more. Now you might recognize this compound, or at least I hope you do. Commonly we call this compound water, but if we were to apply the rules that we've just been using on this, then the formula would be what? We have two hydrogens, so that's going to be dihydrogen. And then we have one oxygen atom, so that's going to be monooxide. And since both the prefix ends with and the element begins with the vowel, we're going to drop the first O on mono and we're just going to say monoxide instead of monooxide. So the systematic name for water is dihydrogen monoxide. And if you, if you type dihydrogen monoxide into a search engine, then that search engine is going to return a bunch of websites that have, that have you know, everything to do with banning a, a chemical called dihydrogen monoxide. And really it's all just a joke because they're just talking about water. So it, what, what, it, what it's designed to do is, is it just goes to show how if you're unfamiliar with this naming system, you could perceive something as harmless as water as a threat because dihydrogen monoxide just carries a negative connotation. It sounds kind of like carbon monoxide, which is a deadly gas. But dihydrogen monoxide is just water. Uh, it covers about three quarters of the surface area of our planet and we need it for survival. So there you go. That is how to name a few molecular compounds.